Hey everybody, so this video has been requested for a while. Basically, it's a pretty much just a showcase of all the mods I use on housing and how like to install them, basic usage for them. I plan on going to more dim depth on some of the major mods such as housing editor or HCSL, but this is a quick look on like all the little mods and just kind of how to install them, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get right into it. Um, there is some people in the background. I don't really know what they're doing. I told them there's nothing for them to do and they're all just staying here. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get started. Okay, so to start, you're gonna need Forge. Um, this is what you use to get mods on Minecraft. Everything here is also on the version 1.8.9. Um, I'm not using any latest versions like 1.19. Everything is on 1.8.9. That's also what Hypixel runs on, so I'd recommend you use that if you're not already on- so if you're not already. Anyways, you're gonna need Forge. I'm not gonna show you how to install it. You can look up another guide. It's super simple. Link will be in the description if you need one. Um, you also need Chat Triggers. Chat Triggers is a website are, uh, I guess, a mod for you to make mods inside of this major mod. Super easy to create mods. I've made a bunch of mods using chat triggers, um, and some of the mods I'll show you also use them. Not gonna show you how to install that. It's a Minecraft mod. Put it in your mods folder. That's it. I'd recommend you also have Optifine and Patcher. Both will be linked in the description. Optifine helps with your performance, and Patcher is just a bunch of quality of life features. Anyways, to get started, we're going to start with Housing Editor. So you may have seen Housing Editor in some of my tutorial videos on the side. It basically is like Scratch, but for housing. We can go here um, and we can just go to like the dashboard. I'll just show you an action so you can create a new action here. Um, oops, I accidentally have dark mode on. So in here we have this when action flag is triggered um, and we can add a bunch of blocks from the side here. So we have different blocks, logic, which is just kind of the basic, doesn't really have a category. Conditions, these are for your like redstone condition things. Um, you have messages, different things that send to the player. Potion effects, so applying a potion effect, clearing a potion effect. Stuff related to health and hunger, stuff related to teleportation, stuff related to the inventory, stuff related to parkour, and then miscellaneous doesn't really have a category. Before I show you how to use it, I'm going to show you how to install it. If you need any support, you could join the official Discord, but I'm also up for helping you in my own, which there is a link in the description. So to install it, go to GitHub, there will be a link in the description, and you can find here. So there is a releases tab with um, some older versions, but Doofus, the creator, has more updated versions just on the GitHub, which you can get to by going to the little green download button, clicking on it, and clicking on download zip. Okay, so once it's downloaded, you'll get this .zip file. Basically, it'll be called housing editor-master. It won't have the one, it just means I've downloaded it before. If you don't have WinRAR, you can extract it using, um, I think you can just right-click it and do extract all, but I'm using WinRAR, so I'm gonna go find WinRAR right here, hover over it, extract to just a file. It'll then create this folder in here, we go inside, this is the main folder with everything in here being the actual like code and stuff. We're just going to go back and we're actually going to re rename this to housing editor. It's super important we do that, otherwise the module won't work at all. Now for putting this into your game, when I go back to your game, do ct files, assuming you have chat triggers installed. It'll open up your chat triggers files. Now this is a lot of other stuff, um, stuff I've worked on, so just ignore that. You won't see most of these folders, but you will see modules, assuming you installed it correctly. Again, you won't see all these. These are stuff I've worked on as well as other people's stuff. You just want to take this folder and drag it into here. Now, once you've done that, you can close out of everything and do slash CT reload. This reloads the chat triggers mod, including everything inside of it. You know it worked when you see housing editor checking for updates and housing editor is up to date. That means you're on the latest version and it's fully working. Now, there's a chance that chat triggers won't automatically install the dependencies that housing editor requires. And if not, make sure you do CT import Exios, I think is how you pronounce it as well as ct import vigilance. Um, those are two required for the housing editor module to work. So if you're having any issues, that's how you, you can fix it. And again, once those are installed, ct reload, but I don't need to, I already have those installed. So now I'm gonna show you how you can actually implement it into your game. Okay, so we're back on the website. Um, you will need to make an account. Okay, so now here we can code basically whatever we want, but what I'm just gonna do is make something super simple. I'm gonna make it conditional. Um, we'll maybe add a condition, let's say if the player gold is greater than or equal to five maybe we're making some sort of shop then we'll decrease five from gold and i don't know we'll maybe send a message so we're gonna grab this send a message scroll up to the top to drag to grab an actual message like object take this here using some color codes and we'll just say you bought this item this is super simple as you can make really complex stuff with housing editor but now we can go up here click on save Give this a title, um, I'll just say I'm going to delete this later. Select a tag, I typically just put function. For visibility, either you can just have it so only you can view it, or you can have anyone view it. You do have to put a description. What I like to do is 
put a little promotion, visit Alex Royer, save the action, and now you saved it. Now you're done. Now you can go up here, find copy ID, click on that, and it'll say copy ID to clipboard. We can go back in game, and now we can import this into a function or an NPC or whatever you want. And to do that, let's I'll just show you how to do it for a function. Go to house settings, go to function, create a new function. I'm going to call this test. And at the top here, um, this is a different one. This is housing editor. We're going to want to paste the ID here and then click on import. This will then go through and add our script that we made. Um, we'll have an estimated time at the top of when it's done. And there we go. It's done. It imported. So now we can use this function anywhere and it does the exact same thing. We can check too. We have a player start requirement gold that's great, greater than equal five. If, then it'll decrease our gold and send our message. We can use this anywhere in our house. Okay, so that's it for housing editor. I'm going to move on now to HTSL. HTSL was made by Buster Brown. HTSL is a form of housing like coding similar to housing editor. However, it's done via like text files and like actually typing the code manually. It's not done through like a scratch type view. Similar to installing housing editor, um, but we're gonna do a little bit different. We're gonna go to the releases tab here and you'll see htsl.zip. We're just gonna wanna download that. And here we go, we have htsl. Same thing that we're gonna do with housing editor. I'm actually just delete those so it doesn't get in the way. We're gonna go here, go to WinRAR, extract. This will bring us to this folder. Inside here, we have all the code. Now we're gonna wanna go back to our game ct files this will open up the folder again not everything here you will have but hopefully you'll have the dependencies for housing editor assuming you're using that as well as housing editor itself but now we're just going to take this file drag it into here and once we do that i already have it i don't need to do that we're going to do ct reload now hesl requires the same thing that housing editor does so we're going to do ct import axios um and if you already did this for um housing editor then you don't need to do it again and it also requires Vigilant, I think it's how it's, yeah, there it is. Um, and if you install those, you're going to CT Reload again. Now, HDSL works a little bit different. There, obviously, there's no website. So to get to the actual code and like write your own code, we're going to do CT Files to open up the files thing. Go to your modules folder and find HDSL. Again, there won't be all this stuff here. Just ignore all this. Go to HTSL, and inside here you'll have a bunch of code, but we're just going to ignore this and go to imports. Now inside here you can see some stuff I've made, and we're just going to actually open this up. Now I like to edit with Notepad++, however you can use Notepad, you can use VS Code, you can use whatever text editor you want. But I want to go ahead and open that up, and here you go. So this is what HTSL looks like from like a code stand a code point of view. I have conditionals, I have chat messages, I have exits, I have um, like stats changes, titles, and stuff like that. Now, if you want a tutorial on how to make a HTSL script, meaning I'll go over to the syntax and I mean, I'll go over the syntax and explain a bit way more on how this works because it is a bit complex, then I would be more than happy to do that. And I actually will do that. I already plan on doing it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it short and just go over how you would import the code. So this file, I've called it monster1.htsl. Um, in order to import it, we're just going to go to, and this could be through anything. This could be through a function, an action button, an NPC, but because I showed, um, housing editor through a function, I'm going to show this with an NPC, go to click actions. This is where you would be to like start actions, enter the file name. I call this monster one import HTSL, and this will import the code into your, whatever you're doing function, NPC, whatever. Anyways, we did get an error for that, so it couldn't find the option Dungeon 4 Monster Item. Now, this was made for my old house, Dungeon Simulator V2, and what it tried to do there was find a function that didn't exist, so it just skip skipped it and went by it, but it wanted to let us know that it went through that error. But that's fine, this is just a tutorial, it doesn't need- I don't really care that it skipped that function, because I just deleted the NPC anyway. Okay, so again, I'll be going over HTSL in the future, um, with a more in-depth tutorial. However, I will include a link in the description to documentation that Buster has made. Um, he did tell me before this recording that this is outdated and he does want to update it. So when he does update it, the link will change or you can just check the pinned comment for any updates about any of these mods. If there are major updates, I'll probably make an updated video with which you can also see from the pinned comment. If you need support, you can ask in his official server or you can ask in mine. I don't mind. Okay, so now on to the bit smaller stuff. These are smaller mods as well as texture packs. Okay, advanced creative tab. I'll have a link in the description. I won't show you how to install it. It's a forge mod download it drag it to your mods folder but basically it allows for way in-depth editing of items so let's say we wanted to edit this iron sword we can hover over it and press h and it'll open this super cool menu which apparently if i hover over this it bugs out the sky i don't know why we can go to name and we can make this like super long basically it 
it's just 10 times better than the slash item menu. It doesn't use anvils, so they don't have a limit. And you can overall just do a lot more. Uh, for descriptions, I use it because you can make them super long, a bunch of color codes, stuff like that, because slash item limits it like a lot. Okay, so that's it for that. Um, so now going on to my mods. So I've created uh, a few mods. Some of them I'm not very proud of, so I'm only going to share two here. Um, basically, we have housing to discord and housing staff. Now, housing to Discord, I have made a video on, and I'll put it on the pins, or I'll put it in the description too for more information on how it works. However, I'll go over it real quick in this video. So, go to the link in the description to my website. Here is the housing to Discord site. It tells you how you can install it manually, as well as change log information for different updates, and the videos down here too. Now, we can click this funny little download button here to install it manually. However, it is on the official Chat Triggers website. Yippee! So now we can go to CT import housing to Discord and it will install it. However, I do already have it installed, but we would do CT reload. Once you do CT reload, you can do H2D for housing to Discord and it'll open up this very fancy menu here that every other mod uses. What we're gonna do is go to settings and you have this toggle to enable or disable the mod, send guild chat messages, send party messages. And here, we're going to put the webhook link. Now, again, if you want a more depth tutorial on how you can do this, there's a link in the description to its own video on how I did it. But basically, it can display your housing chat message to a Discord. Um, and I'll have, like, a on screen right now, just kind of little pictures of how that worked. And there is stuff you can edit to, like the username, the footer text, avatar icon, the color it says, or the color it sends with, um, and then, like, some more advanced stuff here. Okay, so the next mod I made is housing staff. It allows you to moderate your house super easily. Um, however, this is in a plus category. So obviously, I don't make money from these videos. I don't make money from housings, but it does cost money to keep um, a Discord bot up as well as this website up. So as a sort of side way to get some extra money to keep those up for you guys, um, you can buy plus. It is $8 and you get access to a bunch of mods. Now, I plan on doing its own video for plus related content, but I'm just going to go over it real quick. If you install the module the same as the last ones, again, if you have it, I'll have a more in-depth tutorial on how you can install it. But if you install it, same as other modules, H staff, and here you have a bunch of settings. So this is choosing if you want auto banning to be allowed. This is the sensitivity, basically saying how close to the blacklisted words should it ban for. 100% means it means means that it needs to be exactly. 0% means it'll literally ban anyone. 50% means if they're trying to bypass, the bot will probably like detect it. This is words that you would, okay, little mistake here, it should say ban for, you separate them by a comma. I have this set to all the Discord codes and any additional commands you want it to run. I have it run clear chat, which is a command I set up on my housings. Same thing for, for muting. You can also have it logged to Discord and there is a little warning messages and command cooldown before uh, running an additional command. Okay, and I didn't want to show my housing hub website. This has a bunch of cool information and tools you can use for your house. Not only does it talk about the mods that I've made, but it also talks about a bunch of tools such as a name generator, a, a list of emojis you can copy and paste into your house, like for names or holograms, and information about how you can use color codes. Um, there's also a bunch of guides such as poison loops, um, monster NPCs, a bunch of commands and housing, how to make a leveling system, animation and playtime, and more. And a bunch more on this website. I'd recommend you check it out. This is also where you can apply for staff um, or apply for builder. Okay, so the last mod is Pro Tools C CUI. There'll be a link in the description to the chat triggers page. But this was made by Debug, and basically it's super, super simple. We can also import it using the command CT import Pro Tools CY. We're also going to want to do CT reload. I already did it. I don't need to do that. I spelled reload long. I don't care. Basically, when you have a when you have the Pro Tools selection one, we can select two regions. We can select here. It'll do a little gray icon, assuming I right clicked. That is really creepy. We can go over here and go up. Right click and boom, it'll show us a little outline of what we selected. First point is in red, second point is in blue. If you do the same point, it turns purple. Yay! To remove the selection, you can use slash CUI clear. And if you're seeing these red particles, this is a housing feature. Go to settings, go to personal housing settings, and turn off Pro Tools particles. Okay, now we're on the last little stretch of this tutorial. I appreciate you guys sticking around. These are two texture packs that I've used in the past. I don't really use them as much anymore. I just prefer normal texture packs and seeing the normal icons. Redstone Studios has made a housing texture pack that allows you to have custom items, which I'll quickly show how you can use right now. You can download it from their website. I'll have a link in the description. I think they have like dark or light mode. Yeah, or like an overlay. You can just download here, put it in your resource pack folder, and that's just how you install it. It's just like any other texture pack. 
Okay, so I just put the pack on, and as you can see, a few changes have been made. First of all, the housing menu is now a house. We open up the menu. There's a bunch of cool stuff. It replaces, like, most things with some just custom items to make it kind of just feel more unique and more cool. However, this Mac is mostly known for the custom items, which I'll show you how to use now. So grab any item of your choice, and over to the spreadsheet, this will show you all the different custom items that they offer, as well as the ID, which I'll show you how to implement now. So we're holding a sword, so let's find a sword. We're going to use this cobalt sword, I like how that looks. The ID is 009, so to implement that, we're actually going to use um, the Advanced Creative tab mod. However, you can also do slash item um, if you don't have that mod. But basically, we're going to go here, go to name, and now to... So I will just call this cobalt short sword cobalt. I think I spelled that wrong. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> so call it whatever you want. It doesn't actually it doesn't have to match the name. But anyway, to import the ID, we actually import it as if we were using like color codes. So of course, you know, different color codes make the name different. But the way this texture pack works is it looks for those colors and sets the name based on that. So here the ID is 009. So to import this, we would do and sign zero, and sign zero, and sign nine. And there you go, it imports the sword here, so now we have the cobalt sword. It's a custom texture. It looks like that on the ground. It looks like that in your hand. It looks like that in your inventory. It looks like that anywhere. Now you can go to this diamond chest chestplate. I'll show you this on one more item. We're gonna use this earthen chestplate. Um, the ID is 011. So let's go to the thing. Name, 011. Call this whatever. And there you go, you have the chestplate. Here it is. I think if you turn it on to it, it has a custom texture, which is super cool. So yeah, there you go. But yeah, that's the neighborhood pack. Okay, so finally for packs is the housing GUI clarity pack. There'll be a link in the description to the forum post. This was made by Yonama or Yomna, I think is how you pronounce it. But anyways, they have a version for 1.19 and 1.8, and you can download it from Planet Minecraft. Same thing as the last mod, just drag it into your resource packs folder and it'll be installed. This one's a bit more different. Um, instead of the instead of the neighborhood pack, it kind of just changes every single texture. So if we go to the housing menu, uh, I did actually mess with it, that's why it looks like that, and I'm way too lazy to just update it. I promise, it doesn't look like that. But as you can see, literally everything here has changed. We can go to house settings, again, that's my fault. Unlike the neighborhood pack, every single item is changed. We can go to event actions, you can see everything here has been changed. I mean, even just like the toggle for the max players has been changed. So yeah, the person who made this really put a lot of effort into it, which is super cool. And I used this for a while, um, but then I just kind of preferred using my own thing. One of my favorite things too is you go to permission and groups. It actually changes the color based on, actually changes the icon based on the color of the rank. Um, it doesn't do yellow, but it does everything else, which is super cool. Okay, so that's going to end off this video, guys. Um, there's a bunch of people who are also here. I don't know why they were here. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I know you guys have been asking that for a while. Again, I'll plan on doing more in-depth tutorial on the mod like HTSL. But I wanted to get some of the smaller mods out of the way. So you guys, so if someone asks a question about it, I can just look, link them to this video. Anyways, I appreciate you walking all the way through. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I try to stream often. Um, it'd be sick if you could make those streams because we do a bunch of events and stuff, which is super fun. I have a Discord reaching almost 1,000 members. I plan on doing some giveaways when we reach that point. So make sure you join. You don't want to miss it. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you, have any, if you need any help with anything shared in this video, join the Discord. Join my Discord or the respected Discord of the specific mod. But you can also ask it in the description too. I'll see you guys in the next one.